Whatever issues we have in that community, we cannot push it down. Nobody's going to build it for us. If you have an issue right here in the U.S., whether it's papers, whether it's a job, whether it's your community, you must embrace it because your stars are different. The fact that he couldn't succeed with it, it doesn't mean that you cannot succeed with it. You have to believe in your own self and embrace your problems. The second issue I want to say is the importance of being proactive in life. I used to work for a healthcare company called The Life Matters. I came in there as a client service coordinator. And as a client service coordinator, what you do is that you pretty much just schedule nurses to make sure that they can take care of people that could be on schedule. Now, we had an HR manager who was an Indian lady. She was smart, she was experienced. And one day, a lady called and said, I used to work for you guys, this company, I no longer work for you guys. I need a letter that could state that I used to work for you guys so that I could use that letter to get benefits. The HR manager was beautiful and said, you know what, call us in the morning, we are beautiful. That lady called back and said, I'm gonna lose my home if you don't assist me. My colleague next door said, you know what, man, we are busy. The HR manager said, she's busy, call up on Monday. And I looked at that situation and I said to myself, a company is not supposed to function like that. If this lady needs help to pay her bills, to take care of her family, we, as a business, we have a responsibility to respond. So on my own, I sat in front of my computer and I wrote that letter. And I went to the HR manager, the uh, director of operations, and said, well, nobody can help, but it's a, it's a five minutes assistance. Here is a letter, read it, if it's read, it's sign it. And let me give it to this lady. The director of operations looked at me and said, really? I said, yes. So they signed it and I solved that problem. Two days later, the HR manager was terminated. And in the entire company, I was selected to be the, become the new HR manager for that company. It is important to be proactive in life. It is important to take initiative. Because the things you do, people look at it and people see those things. And that is how my career started here in the United States of America. I went on to become an HR manager for that company. I went on to become an HR manager for a bigger healthcare company. And I went on to become an HR director for the Department of Transportation in Baltimore City. I served with three mayors, Mayor Catherine Pugh, Mayor Stephanie Rollins Blake, and Mayor Anthony Brown because of the work I put in on that single day. When we came, we came, came to Baltimore City, they used to call me the unelected mayor. But that's because I started a career with one letter. With one letter of initiative. So I, tell, I come here today to tell the sons and daughters here that you should not bother about what you get from people. You should bother about what you give out. Just like the April former president. It is very crucial in life. Because you never know what turn you're going to take. Now, the third story I want to tell you about is a story that everybody likes to know, which is how we started Spectrum Lounge. I used to work for government, as you said, and I have a partner who is totally different from me. Uh, Mr. Valerie Holmes, excited but serious for some of those who know him. But I had a good job with the city. I was an HR director, I was in the union, I was making $142,000 a year. For a young man, that was good. I just got married, and we were expecting our first child. But then again, there was one day I was driving home, and I was listening to an audio book, and something came out that said, the difference between a rich man and a poor man is what you do with your time between 4 p.m. and 10 p.m. In other words, what they meant was that the difference in your life is what you're going to do with your extra time. And I thought about that statement throughout. I said to myself that what I have is okay. It can take me normally, but I can never transfer my certificates to my son. I can never move on my job to my son. So what am I supposed to do? The first thing I did was to ask for help. You know, too many times in our community or amongst us, there's so much we want to do. There's so much in your head. But you cannot ask for help. There were three people in this town that I called and I said, you know what, I have some little money. 
I have a dream to, to, to do a business. Please help me. Please help me. And two of them called me back with ideas. The one of them today is my partner. He called me and said, I've been watching you. You're very different in so many ways. What do you think about being a partner in nightlife? And I said, yes. I said, the dollar during the day and the dollar at night is the same dollar. So we're gonna get into it together. So one of the things I wanted to talk from this story is just the importance to ask for help. It is very important. You have to get out of your comfort zone. The fact that your father was a teacher doesn't mean you're gonna be a teacher. The fact that your dad or the person that brought you to America is a nurse and that's all you know, it doesn't mean you cannot become an entrepreneur yourself. You have to push forward. You have to ask. You have to make sure that the people that are around you can assist you. And one of the questions that people always ask is, how do I transition from being a full-time employee into entrepreneurship? Well, the answer is simple, you don't. You do both, until one is strong enough to carry you. You know, like they usually say, you gotta secure the bag first before you can go for something else. While I worked for the city, I opened a business, Spectrum Lounge, and Spectrum Lounge from the onset blew out of proportion. You know, we came the hardest part. We had too many people to contain. We had to expand upstairs. The pandemic came, we expanded outdoors. We you know, then expanded the whole thing and took the entire building. But in the first year, we did both, I did both together. I would be in the business for four days and still had to manage my job in the city for a week. You know, with three hours of sleep a day. But because you have to make sure that your side gig is enough to become your full gig, you know, the, the things, one of the mistakes most make is that they have all of these hypotheticals. All of these hypotheticals is all in their head. And before you know it, you got a hall like this, a decorator like this, they quit their job and they're winning for success. It doesn't happen. Hard work pays, nothing happens from the blue. And because of some of these lessons right now, we have been able to seize on the opportunities that we have. We own four lounges right here in the city, the DMV, and we are the only Cameroonians that are there to say the only Americans with four languages here in the United States or in the DMV. And we are profoundly proud of that progress. We expanded into pharmaceuticals. Thank you so much, thank you so much. We expanded into pharmaceuticals, we expanded into uh, gas and oil, and just in an effort to see how can we keep growing? How can we make sure that, you know, the progress we have made keeps going. And I think it's a lesson that everybody should learn. Now that is my story as a public servant and that's my story as an entrepreneur. And as some of you know, I am also engaged in so many community stuff. And the reason I say that is because in life you gotta be part of your, something larger than your own self. You can grow in life, make money, you can grow in life, you're extremely successful, but as you know, a blessing is never completed until it's passed on. I'm gonna say this again. A blessing is never completed until it's passed on. You may become a nurse today, the real question is who have you helped to become a nurse? You may come here and become an entrepreneur and become the best healthcare company that you have. Which a sort of child have you assisted to bring along with you? You never fully embrace your blessings until you assist somebody. You need to believe in something like that in yourself. Four years ago, I was selected by the County Executive, um, County Executive Angela Osobo to be part of the African Diaspora uh, of African Affairs here in the county. I was the only Bangwa child on that board. I'm still the only Bangwa child on that board. The County Executive currently is running for the Senator. And all of us together, we are sure she's going to win and replace Ben Cardi as um, the third black senator right here in the United States. In the board, what we do is to link the civilians with government resources. We are pretty much in the middle to make sure that every, every opportunity that our county has at the county level, we can communicate that community, um, opportunity to our community. And every problem that our community has, we can communicate that problem to the county that we need representation that we need our voices heard, that an African business has the same right like a Caucasian business, that an African community in Bowie 
or a Lanham needs buses that our trash can can be picked up just like in the white communities, that our police can respond to us when we call faster, just enough, like we do in Montgomery County. That is some of the message that we go because you'll be surprised the police responds different in Bethesda than it responds to a call from Belfort Hall. And for those who know, you know. And one of the things we do is to make sure that our representation can keep coming up. We are a powerful block right here in Maryland. And our voices can no longer be ignored. And we have to rise up to make sure that we can be represented fully. And just last year, because of the work we did for the past four years, I had the honor to be selected by Governor Westmore to represent the African community right here on the Governor's Commission on African Affairs. And the goal of that is to make sure that we can focus on inclusivity. That every African here in Maryland has a voice through us. So if you have an issue with your business, if the county is giving you trouble, if Maryland is giving you a problem, I could be a point of contact to at least assist in that effort. And that is what we need to do to move our community forward. And I don't, I'm not part of this, not because I have the time to, but because it's important for all of us to have that, that conversation. It is our time. And because we have Paul Focha here, which I'm so honored to be in his presence, um, I'll speak about Soba. Paul Focha is in Maryland, is the oldest Soba right here in Maryland. And as a Soba son, as a Soba member, we are always so proud of Paul Focha. Please put your hands together for Paul Focha. Thank you so much for your leadership. Thank you so much. And Soba, Soba is the accidents of those who went to St. Joseph's College in Sasse. I'm also very involved in that community as a public relations officer for the past 10 years growing that. So the importance of community service goes back to what I said, which is regardless of what you achieve in life, you have to be part of something larger than yourself. You have to be part of your community. You know, it's sort of people as us, we are one people and we have made tremendous progress, but that progress has to continue. That progress has to continue from today. And I hear one of our speakers said, they're there to say we are 41,000 tonight, and by the end of tonight, we're gonna to continue to make sure we can get the 100,000 goal. That is an audacious goal, but it's a possible goal. And while I may not be with you guys tonight, I am deeply honored to be part of you. Ms. Oslatino, thank you so much for the opportunity. You are such a leader in this community, and we are profoundly proud to be part of this. Thank you so much. You might just say again, thank you for coming. All the realities, um, Mr. Mayor, thank you so much. I am the president of a non-for-profit organization, organization called the Friendship Circle. And the Friendship Circle, what we do is that we support communities with, in different aspects. One of the things we did last year was that we shipped a container of hospital beds to Cameroon and distributed those hospital beds across different hospitals in Cameroon. As I speak to you now, a second container of medical supplies worth over 400 million francs a day just got to Cameroon. And I can pledge that this community is going to benefit from that. I can pledge that this community is going to benefit from that container of medical supplies. And it's something that we're going to do. But what I'm also going to do is that, you know, we have myself, my wife, my family, I'm going to support your families with a thousand dollars. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And, and Mr. Mayor, your, your words were so powerful. Your call to action was so powerful. I think that's what we need. If you grow, we grow. If your community grows, our community grows. I'm going to support your effort again as well with another thousand dollars. Thank you so much.